evening everyone. Oh, I'm just sorting some out on my phone. Right. So uh, I just had a message before coming on. <laughs> and it was a Reddit post. <laughs> yeah, right. As if I'm going to listen to that person. Right. Just saying, like, I must admit there are some people out there who take it a bit too far in this case, right? They've, like, sort of, like, gone past the facts, the facts of the case. And they just make bringing up, doing a live and doing, talking about something which is, which isn't anything to do with the case. It's not a fact. So, anyway, so I thought, yeah, I'm going to listen to you, yeah, okay, right, I won't do no more lives, no more videos on Sebastian Rogers, like how, as I've said, I always report and I only report on the facts, and another thing I've noticed again, it won't let me live stream to Twitter, X. So I'm cancelling my upgrade. If I've got to manually post it at the end, then why am I paying for an upgrade where it says I can live stream, but it's not letting me? So I'm going to cancel it. They can shove it. Elon Musk. Actually, I could get in touch with him, send him a direct message. Why is your ex not letting me live stream my videos when I'm upgraded? I've got the blue tick. So, why aren't I like, I might do that actually before, see what it says, right? And then come, depending on what it says, I might either, he might say, oh, sorry. I'll sort that out for you. Or, oh no, you've got to be upgraded to the top level. I'll go, you know what, go fuck yourself. And cancel it. <laughs> because I'm not upgrading anymore. You know? I might as well just go back to how I was before, where I wasn't paying anything. Okay, I can put long posts up. Like, right, long posts. But I don't anyway. But at least I could still share my videos without paying for anything. Anyway, as it says in my title, no reward. Why is that? And I did some checking as to how, because I know there's one, there's Eli, Elijah Vu, right? Uh, there's an organisation that donated uh, so much, right? Um, then I think it was the police donated so much, and I think people then could donate to that fund, right? And they got it up to $40,000. So why has... Like, you hear Seth, you ask Seth that question, and you know, say they're working on it, they're working on it, but this is now coming up to six months on the 26th of this month. It'll be six months, I believe. Six months. He did have one set up, but the lawyer, all the money that was um, in that pot was only um, what they call, hold on, um, a pledges, only pledges. There was no cash in the pot. It was just pledges. And you can't rely on them. Because a year later, and I might say, what? You want me to pay now a year later? No. You know what I mean? So pledges aren't the right way to go. So, so Seth put a hold on that. Because he didn't like that idea. But then... I'm thinking, so why don't you get in touch with some of your county? Why can't they help set one up? Why can't 
TBI, FBI, all these other associations, Q, C U E, I can't remember the full name of it, I just know it as Q. Why could they not help them set up a, a reward? There's so many ways, I believe, in America, in the USA, to set up rewards. I know rewards can't be um, foolproof. It's not going to mean anyone's going to come forward. But money loosens lips. There might be someone out there who's got Sebastian. He's just waiting for that money to come rolling in. Right? And then, and I must admit, Seth had all that mo money donated through um, to go fund me. But he hasn't been at work. He's been, I, searching first every day. But it was just him and two other guys. For the first month, then a YouTuber promoted it and he got more searches coming out and helping him. But then he done, done an injury, an old injury of his came back, but worse. So he went back to work, but he couldn't, he couldn't go back to work. He, he signed off sick then because of his shoulder and he was waiting for an operation, which he's had done. But in all that time, he's not been at work. He's still got rent to pay and bills to pay. And he was getting, uh, posting out T-shirts and things like that and everything. So he's still got bills to pay. But he said he's still got some of that money left. You know, I will, it talks about why you shouldn't use your own money. In a reward, when you make a reward. Don't use your own money because you might need that money to pay bills if you're not working. But it tells you that in this information that I found. So we're going to look at that because uh, you hear people ask this question, but no one's, I've not seen anyone actually do a video or a live or anything about the reward. A reward, some you should say. Right, let me just get rid of it. Me, don't need me on there because I'm gonna make it bigger. Okay, I hope you can see that. Okay, I can't get in any, it won't let me go in any further. No, it's not gonna let me go in any further. Right, as you can see, it's got rewards and donations. It's right, and the first one it says most parents will want to put up a reward in an effort to turn over every stone in the search for their missing child, even though it is not known whether rewards actually help in cases involving a missing or abducted child. You don't, we don't. Hold on, I'm just going to go and crucify a cat. Fecker is in the kitchen. <laughs> I don't know what he's looking for. His food is on the floor. <laughs> so, but he's moaning. But that's my fur baby Toby. He's the moaner constantly. Anyway, so we don't know if by putting a reward out, it will help. Right? But if they find, say they had a reward and they had the names of everyone who had paid into that reward and then no, that reward isn't used in the end. They just pay everyone back because that money is put into a holding place 
subscribe, as you can imagine. And if you know, if it isn't claimed by anyone, they just give the money back. But we never know because we don't know there could be that person out there who is just waiting and thinking, hmm, why aren't I putting a reward out for you, Sebastian? Don't I love you? Obviously not, because there's no reward for you, Sebastian. Right? I swear to God, I'm going to kill that cat. I swear to God. Does anyone want a, a male cat? That constantly moans morning to night. And the only time he shuts up is when he has, has his afternoon nap. And, once he, and when he goes to bed on the night time. That's the only time he shuts up. Anyway. So, I just think, I, I can't understand why neither of these three parents, the mother and stepfather and the father, have not got together to get a reward up. Right? The money isn't for them, it's to help, find, it's another resource to help find their son. Right? It's not... It's not going to hinder the case. If anything, it could help the case, I think. Like I said, if they put a reward out, if there's a reward out there, then that person might think, hmm, okay, 10,000. Hmm, we'll see. But what they say is set it at a, a reward at a certain amount. Right? So say you say you set it at 30,000 or 40,000. Don't go any higher, because if you keep going higher, they're going to go, oh, they've upped the price. I'll wait a bit longer. So anyway, it says, number two, use a reward offer to renew media interest, yep, in reporting on a missing child or to motivate a person living on the fringe of society to call in a lead. Yeah. As we said, if there, if a reward was set up now, that hopefully it will go nationwide. And you might there might just be someone out there who knows something. There might just be that one person where that money would loosen his lips or her lips or their lips. Right? So, by not having rewards, you're not making every possible use of finding your child. And I just don't understand why, after six, nearly six months, no rewards have been set up. Not a penny. And I know people would donate to that reward. Because they know it would go to... Whoever it was, it would go to finding Sebastian, one way or the other. It would go to finding Sebastian, and that's all people want, is to find Sebastian. Right? Three. Be prepared for resistance. Yep, you get resistance here. From your law enforcement contact, because a police fears that the reward will result in a ton of false leads. Oh, yeah. You get some resistance of, I believe, some of your county sheriff's office would say, no, 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 not a good idea. Because, yes, okay, you might get a load of false leads. Well, that's your job, some of your county sheriff, to get off your backside and follow those leads. One of them might not be a false lead. One of them might be a lead which finds Sebastian. But apparently they've only assigned one officer a day. A day. Each day, I don't know if it's the same officer, dated because he has days off. So each day there's one assigned officer focusing on the case of Sebastian Rogers. One. Okay. Okay, number four, 
Because of the number of legal and technical issues that can arise from a reward offer, you need to obtain expert advice from a knowledgeable attorney, your law enforcement contact, your banker and the parents of missing children who have successfully established a reward fund. So, before you do anything, you you talk to an attorney who's knowledgeable in that area. You contact your law enforcement, that one officer they sign each day. You get in touch with your banker and the parents, and parents of missing children who have successfully established a reward fund. So, speak to parents of ever missing children who have set up reward funds and maybe find their child through that. Make sure that the people who you give who give you advice have first hand experience managing a reward fund. That I do agree with. I don't think that first lawyer had any experience because it was all um monetary pledges. It wasn't it's like on a piece of paper I pledge 10,000, I pledge 2,000, I pledge 1,000, sort of thing. It wasn't any cash. So, if Seth has got some money of that, I'm not saying all of it, if he's got money of that, um, go from me, then why can't he put that towards setting up a reward fund? Because the reward fund before was only $3,000, $3,500. That's not going to get... If someone's got a child, that person is not going to even get out of bed for $3,500. Right? Hang on. So they should have set one up straight. I say within the first... By the end of the first month, there should have been a reward put up. And they should have spoke to them. Necessary people like the attorneys, the law enforcement, the bankers, and parents of other missing children who have set up reward funds. They will tell you exactly how they went about it. You know what I mean? Right. Your reward offer can become a legally enforceable contract which means that anyone who complies with the terms of the offer can legally can be legally entitled to claim the reward and can sue for its recovery. Right, so really what they're saying, if so, if you just put a reward up there with no... Like, if it may, I'd say, in the recovery, any information leading to... Finding my son alive or unalive, but in the recovery of my son. It's no use people saying, oh, I know where he is, he's in this house. And then they get there and he's not. Well, t- he was, but they've obviously moved him. You, you didn't, de- de- yeah, whatever the word is, depict what information you needed you just said any information leading to the whereabouts i told you where he was they've moved him not my fault told you where he was she got here quicker you know what i mean so you have to be very careful how you word it that's why they say get a knowledgeable attorney who knows how to word these things who's done rewards before for missing children Number six, this, I've mentioned this several times already, monetary pledges are not as reliable as donations. They're not. Because they can pull out. They can say, oh, John, it's been six months now. No, no, can't mark, no. I'm not paying that. That was only a piece of paper. Pff, rip it up. Because it's not. they're not going to say in five years' time if someone says, I found your son or I know where your son is. And they do find him. And then they go to that person, well, we need that money now. You you pledged that money. No, I pledged it five years ago. Yeah. 
I wasn't expecting this to go on another, to go on the five years. I was expecting maybe six months, maybe a year, at the most. Sorry, I haven't got that money now. So, monetary pledges are not reliable donations. Number seven. Don't use personal funds to finance the reward and don't offer more money than you can raise. Right? So, what you do is you can set it up, then you can put the link out, yeah, for people to donate. Then when you've got a fair enough amount, be it 10,000, 20,000, whatever, then you say, right, that's it. No more donations. The reward is 30,000. That's what we've done at, like, that's been donated. That's what we're going to go with, 30,000. Yeah? Don't go up it again in a month, a month like, well, we've had another 5,000 worth of donations coming. I will just up it up to 35, and then, oh, we've had another 2,000, up it up to 37. No. Once you set a price, or 30,000 or whatever it is, you don't hire it. A bit like, I've, has anyone ever seen that film, Ransom? I, I love that film. Where, who's the actor now? I can't think of his name. I love the actors. I love both, both the actors in it. Well, all three. The mother, the father, and the guy doing the Ransom. Right? And... They put a ransom out, and he said, when will you hand the money over, we'll give you your child. So he goes there with all intent purposes of getting his son back. He gets there, and the guy who's collecting the money knew nothing about that. He knew nothing about it. Right? So, look, unfortunately, in a way, police have been following, and so... Then they come and swat him and everything and killed the one guy and the other guy got away. He was waiting in the trees, got away. So the father then, this right, this one, the main leader of the uh, kidnapping said, was going mental on the phone. And anyway, he demands to go meet him somewhere. And on the way there, he's seen this advertisement of his son being missing and all this stuff. And he phoned up his attorney, his partner in his company, and told him to get hold of, I think it was a news real company. And he goes there and he puts all this money on the table. He said, here it is, whatever it was, $10,000 or $20,000. I can't remember what it was now. And he put it all on the table. He said, there's the money you wanted. But you're never going to get that money because now that money is on your head. Anyone who gives me information on my son will get this money. Right? And he even, he then, because it caused so much uproar, he went out and spoke to the press again. He said, in fact, I'll up it to this amount. Right? And he's getting the guy who, who kidnapped his son really riled up and all this stuff. He got his son back, eventually. Not with the help of the police. And, well, with the help of the police in one way, but not with the help of the police. Because they said what he did was wrong. He shouldn't have done that. And I thought, well, no, as a parent, I'd be mad as well. If someone said, you hand the money to us, we'll give you your son. And then I'll get there and you're not giving me my son. I'd be flipping mad. No way. Because the way I'd look at it, like he did, even if you get the money, I'm not getting my son back, am I? So why should I give it to you? You're going to kill my son anyway, either way. So why should you get the money? But it's a really good film. Go and watch it. Mal Gibson. That's it. And I can't think of the other guy. He was the lead guy in CSI New York, that guy, and Mel Gibson, and the woman, his wife who played next by was, 
Oh God, you were sitting there and I can't do. She's actually in another film with him as well, so. Anyway. So just say, uh, don't use personal funds. But if he's got money in that um, go fund me, then you could use some of that. And then they could get that going. And then once they've got enough, what they think is enough, like 30,000, 30 to 40,000, that's enough. If someone's got a child, that's going to make some loose lips out there. Right? Number eight, keep separate bank accounts for each type of fund. Reward, family, you know, reward, family support or search. So that money he's got in the GoFundMe, say he's got, I don't know, 10,000 left or 15,000 left, right? Keep 7,000 for family support, right? For his rent and all that lot. And put 7,000 towards the ransom. And maintain accurate records showing where each monetary donation came from and how the money was spent. Right? Avoid having direct control over any funds received by designating trusted individuals outside the family to have signature authority over the accounts. By removing yourself from control of the funds, you eliminate any unnecessary scrutiny by members of the public or the media about the use of the funds. That's why you have a signature, one of the signatures would be an attorney. The other one could be the manager of the bank where it's been kept, you know what I mean? Or the sheriff of some of some of the county. You can have those sort of people as the signatures. Number ten, the last one. Establish written procedures detailing how the money is to be dispensed if it cannot be used for the reward. Well, like I said, if it cannot be used for the reward, then it just say. Uh, maintain accurate records showing where each monetary donation came from and how the money was spent. Well, if you go and keep a record of where the monetary donation came from, like the name and an email, maybe, or name and a phone number, right, or name and address, then if that reward money is not or cannot be used, you just reimburse those people back. Or if it's money you put in, say you had 10,000 or 20,000 and you donated that 10 to 20,000, right? And you didn't need it back. You could say the reward money goes to this organisation. Like EcuSearch, who's been out there searching. And all these other voluntary organisations that have been out there searching. Right? And give it to them. But that's the key points. Right? Let's have a look. I've just got that up there, I don't know why. <laughs> so, I can't, I still cannot understand why a reward has not been made or put, put up. Why isn't FBI could do? I'm going, I'll find some out.
I meant to do this earlier and I got sidetracked. Right. Right. Rewards for justice. Let's have a look. Let's see what these say. For the very best in missing person, media coverage, there is only one hook. No, um, no, it's not what I wanted. So that can go. Let's try a smell. Hmm. Right, I've got this one. A reward for the safe return of your child might be what it takes to persuade someone who knows something to speak up. It's hard to assess the true value of a reward in recovering a missing child. The offer of a reward might renew media interest in reporting on a missing child, or it might be the thing that motivates a person living on the fringe of society for calling a law a lead. Although rewards are doing not always produce the right leads or have the anticipated results, the use of a reward may be worth considering. Right? This chapter discusses some issues for you to think about before setting up a reward. It explains how to manage reward or donation funds correctly and where to go for advice. Right. Monetary rewards. Ugh. Regardless of the odds that a reward will work, most parents will want to offer one if they possibly can. I've read a lot of this already. However, many issues need to be considered before an informed decision about a reward can be made. Get expert help. Because of the number of legal and technical issues that can arise from a reward offer, you need expert advice from a knowledgeable attorney, your primary law enforcement contact, your banker and the parents of other missing children. Right? Make sure that we've read all that. If you offer a reward, you are agreeing to pay some wrong money if a person's actions lead to the requested result. That means anyone who complies with the terms of the offer. That's why I said you have to word it very carefully. You have to word, that's why you need a lawyer. You will have resistance from law enforcement when you know, when, when you know that. Clearly state the purpose of the offer. First decide what you want the reward to accomplish. Bringing Sebastian home. Then make sure that this purpose is clearly spelled out in the offer, for example. It is a good idea to make your child's safe return a written condition of the reward. Yep. The better the description of the reward's purpose, the less likely it is that you will have an argue to argue later over whether someone complied with the terms of the offer. Well, actually, if you say, uh, to whoever gives us information, I'm my son, dead or alive. No. No, I only offer the reward to any information in finding my child alive. You're not going to get my, no money off me or any contribution of anyone for giving me my son back to me unalived. 
You know what I mean? Because eventually his body will turn up. It might be 5 years, 10 years, 15, 20. He may not be hanged by anyone. He might have just wandered off. You know what I mean? He could be out there on his own somewhere. Or with a group of kids somewhere. Surviving like they do on the streets. Be careful in establishing the amount of the reward. Don't offer more money than you can afford to pay. Decide on the maximum amount of the reward in the first offer and stick to it. So once you've got enough money that you believe is good enough for a reward, say 10000 or 20000 I'd say between twenty and 30000 right? Then that's the, the total you stick at. Because if you raise the amount later, people may wait for a more lucrative offer before calling in a lead. Exactly. Check to see if special rewards funds already exist. Sometimes state and local agencies and even the FBI have funds available to put up as a reward in cases involving predatory abduction. Ask your law enforcement contact to help you find out about such funds. Right? Now, if they're saying it isn't the dad, nope, he was at work, it isn't Chris, we can definitely rule him out. It wasn't the mother. Someone else took him. He either went outside and they picked him up. Right? He'd arranged with someone to meet him somewhere at a certain time and Whatever. You know what I mean? So, are they saying it's an abduction? They're not telling us nothing. They're not telling us nothing. We don't know if he did leave on his own. We don't know if someone came into the home and abducted him. We don't know if something happened in the home, be it accident to him. And they, instead of reporting it, they thought they needed to... Hide the fact. We don't know. Because law enforcement and TBI are not talking. They're not even giving us any updates. Not even an update to say, sorry, we've got no more updates. Not even one of them. We're not getting nothing off them. Right? Let's get on. Hmm. I wouldn't go for pledges because people might say, well, I'm only having this pledge here for, what, two months, three months, six months? After that, take the pledge out. No, I'd go for donate cash. I have it where I've got the a manager of the bank where it's being held. The money will be held. A, an attorney and the sheriff. Three people signatures needed on that before it gets released. I'm well, not even the bank manager. Yeah, because he'd have to have the two others, he'd have to have the attorneys and the sheriff's signature before he could get hold of it. So yeah. Their pledges are not forever. As hard as it may be, refrain from using your own personal funds for the reward. Based on the terms and conditions bound out in the reward offer, you may be liable for payment of the reward and you may even be sued. And though you may not realise it in the beginning, <coughs> you may be faced. Hold on, hold on. Um, my brother, where was I? Although you may not realise it in the beginning, you may be faced with financial constraints months or years later. For example, if you're out of work for an extended period of time, helping in the search for your child, which Seth is. 
I think he should be back at work now because he had the operation. So, and he's back to normal. And he's out, out doing some searches the other week. So, I think he should be back at work now. So, if that means, like, the searches are organised and he's not there, but he's got searches out there, then fine, at least searches are going on. Or if the searches are arranged for when he's got days off. You know what I mean? Monetary donations can be extremely helpful to families whose lives have been turned upside down by the disappearance of a child. They can be used to help finance a search, fund a reward or support the family. If a parent isn't able to work during the search process, that's what Seth's GoFundMe was. To help pay for all the bills that were all coming in still and to help with the search. And yet people questioned him, questioned him. He's out, he was out there every day for a month with just him, another colleague from work and someone else. For a month. He wasn't getting paid. Make sure, I don't know. For this reason, you need to be aware of some important accounting and accountability issues that, if not handled correctly, could result in legal and financial ruin. Right, that's why I say I will get an attorney as well on that. Make sure that both you and your contributors know how many money it will be used. Just tell us. Where's it going to be? Where this money will go, right? Uh, because they don't have to have it as a GoFundMe. They can have it as um, another, another way of setting the money up to be paid, right? And then once it's hit a certain total, that's when they say, actually, stop now, no more, right? And they put a stop to it, they close it, everything. And then the money is stored in the bank, ready with the three signatures or four signatures or how many signatures you want on it, right? Stored in the bank for when anyone comes forward with information leading to finding your son alive. Not dead, alive. Uh, no, I don't think, if they was to set anything up like that, I would not have Seth, Katie or Chris in control of any of it. There should not be a signature on theirs, of theirs on it. Should not. Make sure that the individual selected for this task for the signatures are trustworthy and they understand their role and potential liability. Maintain accurate records that show where the donations came from and how the money will be spent. Be honest with the public. Be prepared for questions which may turn into accusations concerning the use of donated funds. Designate one person who could be you or could who could be you or trusted friend or family member to answer all questions concerning how the funds are being spent. Information concerning the number of donations of or the amount in the accounts should never be released to the media. Specify what will happen to the reward in the event your child is located before the money is spent. Sometimes large sums of money in a reward fund are left unspent. Therefore, you need to establish rich... Sorry, that was my cat again. Written procedures for how you can specify that all donations over a certain amount are to be returned. Just 
It's all right. I've got a bag under my table and all that. Fecker keeps climbing, innit? Right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, you need to establish rich, rich, written procedures for how the money is to be dispensed if it cannot be reused, be used for the reward. For example, you can specify that all donations over a certain amount are to be returned. If the donor is traceable, or that unused funds are to be donated to an organisation or agency that help with the search, excess reward fund money should never be used for the family's personal expenses. No, it shouldn't, because that was not the purpose of the fund. Again, talk with an attorney to determine how to handle the situation. Right? Like, if someone donated, I don't know, what's the smallest amount, I would say, what's the smallest amount, minimum amount? Like, if I donated, I wouldn't want, if I only donated $5 or £5 or $5 or $10, I wouldn't want it back. I just say, give that to whoever, to an organisation, whatever, or, whatever organisation they depict, they say it's go, will go to. So they could say, once, once they've reached a certain amount, right? They could say we're trying to raise thirty thousand pounds, thirty thousand dollars, right? Once we reach thirty thousand dollars, the money will be stored in this bank account. This is the link. It's not a um, uh, go from me. It's a direct link that pays the money into that account. Yeah. Like, you know, you have a bank account. You could have something like that, I suppose, where people can just transfer the money direct into that bank account. And that money cannot be withdrawn at all unless you've got three signatures. Okay? It can only be withdrawn by cheque, and it needs three signatures. So, I'd say, I don't know, because some people might say, well, I want my $10 back. It's hard to say, isn't it? So, I don't know. If it was me, I'd say, you know, if I donate $10 and 20 no, I donated that willingly. I don't want it back. But some people might not be in that position. They might be in that, like, six months later, they might be thinking, I could do that money back now. You know what I mean? That would help a bit. You know what I mean? But I don't know what the limit would be before returning the money back. It might be $50. Anything under $50 won't be returned. Anything over $50 will be. It could be $100. Anything under $100 will not be returned. Anything over hundred dollars will be returned. The any money that is not returned will be going to this organization and this org it all depends. You could have two organizations or what? Right. So but you can have I'm sure you could have it set up where people could just transfer the money direct into that account. And I know the FBI, I knew it. Maybe. I knew the FBI could come. Where did it say that again? Yeah. I'll get off. I'll get off. Right. There. Check to see if special rewards funds already exist. The FBI might be able to help. I can go in Elijah Vu. The police department there donated so much. I think it was FBI donated some and someone else. They got it up to $40,000. And that's when they put out the reward then. But, you know, actually, they put it as $15,000 first. 
the rewards of 15,000. I made that mistake because I put out 15,000, but then it went up to 20. Then they got another 25,000 from another two organisations, which put it up, and with donations from the public, it got it up to 40,000. So now that's where it is now, 40,000, no more, no less. Right? So, why haven't I not even discussed this with the FBI? Right? Is there no big company out there that would be willing to put a donation, a big donation in? Who won't miss that money? Even if it's 20,000, it's like, there's 20,000, I don't want it back. You know what I mean? If it's not used, then give it to the organisation that you stated. But, to be honest, I just can't get my head around the fact there's no reward. Not one penny. And every time Seth has been asked about when he's been on a live or he's been, well, people are thrown in. I think people have stopped asking him now. Because all he kept saying is, we're looking into it, we're looking into it, we're looking into it. Well, it don't take six months to look into getting a reward started. Come on. This is your child. This is another means of finding your child. Get a reward up and running. I'm sure there'd be hundreds of people who would do that, would do that too, if it was going direct into the pot of the reward. Not into a... Oh, go from me. Because Elijah's wasn't a go from me. They just gave... They said they could go to the uh, police station, the sheriff's office, and make the donation there. You know what I mean? Or they could send it, and they give. I think they gave out a link, uh, where they could directly send it if they wanted to. But it got it up to forty thousand, and I thought, wow. But why don't they? Don't they care? Come on, you've got three parents who cannot work together, will not work together, right? One's like, one says something, the other one fires back. That one says that one says something, he'll fire back. Katie, not saying anything, not doing anything. And don't tell me they've been putting leaflets out when they was down in that... Um, Caravan Park, they said, oh, we're going here because Sebastian could be anywhere. Well, the first place I'd be going to if I was in another state and I had a missing child, first place I would go to, I would be going to the sheriff's office or the police station, whoever, and saying, look, my son Sebastian Rogers has been missing out since February the 26th. Have you, do you know about that? Because it is an Amber Alert and if they go, no, we didn't know anything about that. Well, is it all right if I go around and put posters out on the on the posts and get them, shop owners to accept it? Could you put one up in your station? You know what I mean? But they didn't. And I'm sure if they'd been putting post flyers out on the, in shops and windows and posting, whatever, law enforcement would have seen it. But when Silver on the scene was doing that search in that house, that abandoned house, and the police come, the police didn't even know about Sebastian Rogers. So don't sit there, Kate, and tell me you're out there searching. You're out there putting flyers out. You know what I mean? Because they didn't even know where you were staying in that state didn't even know about Sebastian being missing. So if you can't do that, you're not going to work with Seth because you know Seth knows you too well. He knows when you're lying. So 
You've got three parents who can't work together. How on earth can they get a reward going for this child? If Seth started a reward, oh no, it's a scam. It's a scam. So it needs to be a reward which is direct into a bank account, not into a GoFundMe, direct into a bank account. Right? You could phone the law enforcement up just to confirm that it's the right bank account. So look, i there's a, ba a link going about for reward, uh, trying to raise money for reward for Sebastian. And this is the link. Is this safe to send money to? And they will come back and say, yes, we have set that account up. So it's simple to get it confirmed. And that way, Se Seth wouldn't have no control of the money. Katie wouldn't, neither would Chris. It'll be three. People and I would have the attorney, the manager, and the sheriff. So some people might not agree with the sheriff, but I think it's trustworthy. Whether they're doing a good job on this case is another question. I do question that. But I do think they're trustworthy. So I'd have those three people as signatures. So not one of them could go in and write a check. Not one. That any checks has to have three signatures. Anyway, I just thought I'd talk about that tonight because it's just I just don't understand why there's no reward. Right? It's a shame. Because not all resources are being used to find this child. This might be a turning point if they ever had a reward put out for Sebastian. And why these three parents cannot work together? Just dumb fat. Mate, just boiled my blood. Forget about what happened with Seb uh, Chris and Sebastian. Forget that for now. There's time for all that once we find Sebastian and once we get him home. Right? There's time for all those accusations to come out then. For now, put them aside, get your bums off your chairs, and Chris, don't use the excuse, well, I work nights, I'm working different times to you. Right? You've got time when you come off in the morning. And you've had your sleep to go and patrol all these uh, YouTubers and Twitter accounts and Instagram and TikTok and Facebook pages. You have time to scroll through all them and see what people are saying. So if you've got time to sit there in your little five in your five wheeler, then you've got time. To get in your car and go out and ping flyers to every flipping tree, every post, go to every shop, every garage, every bus station, bus stop, bus station, you name it. Get the flyers out. But that state, Mississippi, where you are, where you was, I should say. Did not even know Sebastian was missing. Yet you was was camping out in a five wheeler not so long ago, just across the road from that abandoned house. But the police in that area knew nothing about Sebastian going missing. Good one. We've had enough of your lies now, Chris and Katie. Stop making out you're doing this and doing that, but you're doing it in private. We don't care. We don't see no proof of you getting out there. There's no proof of you putting flyers out. Obviously, because the law enforcement knew nothing about Sebastian. Because you couldn't even go and just quickly confirm with them if they knew about Sebastian or not. A five-minute trip to their law enforcement office. 
if they didn't know, why couldn't you put his flyer up somewhere then? In the, um, I don't know, in the break room. Wherever. Hang some out to your officers so they know who they, what to look for. But they couldn't even do that. That would be my first point of call if I was in a different state. Is go to that the local law enforcement or police of that state and just ask them if they know about Sebastian Rogers being missing. Simple. Yeah, okay, fine. Well, you don't mind if you put some flyers out, will you? No, okay, fine. They even took their magnets off the side of their car. on the caravan site, where the five-wheeler was parked up. That says a lot. But then again, that could be bad promotion for the caravan site because they might be thinking, well, if some, anyone comes past here, you're on the front of our caravan park and sees that. They're going to think, oh, hold on. We're coming to this caravan park with our children and there's a missing child. New turn around and go to another one. So I can understand that. But when you leave that caravan park, you could slap that magnet on your car. Right? When you're coming back up to Tennessee, whenever it is, or wherever you're staying at the moment. I don't know. I don't care. But I do know they have not been. Wherever they are, if they're not back in Tennessee and they're in another different state altogether, I bet you, they have not been to law enforcement there and confirmed as if to see if they know about Sebastian being missing. Anyway, this is only a short live tonight because I knew it would be because there, would, there isn't much to talk about about rewards. But I think they need to start looking into setting up a reward. Not oh, we're looking into it. They need to actually start doing something. Be proactive and start getting a reward done. Because you're just missing out on a possible opportunity of finding your son. Anyway, just a short one tonight. I did do a video earlier on another case, so there's that one out there already. So until tomorrow... Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow. Not sure what I'm talking about yet, but we'll see when we get there. I wake up in the morning. I probably have an idea about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. No, I wait till the morning and I'll get my picture ready, right? So, anyway, I'll see you all tomorrow. If you're watching on replay, please give this video a like. Please share. And if you haven't already, please go and subscribe and hit the all section. That way you'll be informed of all my videos that go out and every time I go live. So until then, good night.